Hey there, fabulous ladies. Welcome to Bring Back Your Pink, where we celebrate the fabulousness of midlife and beyond. I am Jen B, your host, your biggest fangirl and impact-driven entrepreneur living my biggest and boldest life, so you can too. Get ready to leave behind societal expectations and embrace a life filled with laughter, joy, and endless possibilities. So stand tall, turn up the volume, and let's dive into the world of living life in full color. Together, we'll rediscover the power of being unapologetically ourselves, and we will release our inner vibrancy, and together, we will bring back our pink. Let's make every moment count, girls. Hello, beautiful lady, and welcome to this week's episode of Bring Back Your Pink. I am so excited today. I have my friend, Joe Clark, on the podcast. Joe is a midlife mentor and transformation coach, podcaster, and speaker. With her coaching, she has helped and supported hundreds of women become energized, healthy, and ready to embrace their second half of life. Joe helps you design and create an incredible second half of life and supports you with tools and strategies as you discover your purpose, health, and passion again. And we all need to do that. Joe and I met Oh, about 18 months ago in a business mastermind um, of Tracy Harris, the ICM mastermind, that we're still in together today. And she has had a first row seat in my transformation. She and I both agree, at this time of our lives, it's time to focus on you. How do you feel or how do you want to feel? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Make the second half of your life your best half, and it starts here. But... Everyone has a story, and Jo has gone through a transformation of her own over the past three years. At the top of her bio, she states, everything that I've gone through has brought me to this point, and it feels fabulous, but it wasn't always that way. So welcome, Jo. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Hi, Jen. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but here, but how, how great is it that we can have a chat about this sort of thing? Because it's it's my favourite topic to oh, talk about. Yeah. I was going to say, and just so you ladies know that are listening, Joe and I have just been chatting for about 45 minutes before we even started this, <laughs> because we always have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Always got a lot to say, Jen, because there is so much to say. There's so many different things that we can explore when we're talking about the middle of life. So many things, the good, the bad, and the hairy. (laughs) Let's start. Let's start with your transformation because you're the same age as me, 55. And three years ago, you started your own transformation. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Tell us your story. This is what's fascinating about by the time you get to this age, you've gone through quite a bit of shit. You know, every, everyone's got a, a story and a Absolutely. variety of different chapters that, that belong to that story. So by the time I got to my um, early 50s, I um, yeah lost my dad and losing a parent is always tricky because you get through that stage where, you know, you've got the children who are growing older, but you've also got your parents who are growing older. So you've uh-huh. got the care factor there. 100%. So I lost dad. Um, I helped my um, nurse, my mother-in-law, through her last couple of weeks and we were with her at home caring for her as she she was passing away. Um, I had my own mum who was dying and dying very slowly and um, we'll talk about how mum sort of, she was really the impetus to for for me to do what I'm doing now. And then my kids started to get older and uh, we're leaving home. And I was in a profession. I was a teacher for over three decades. And it was it was one of those jobs. Well, it is a job where you have to love Jen. Um, oh, and, yes. and when you when you start to fall out of love with something like that that demands so much of you all the time, uh, that's really hard. And 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 what was hard is that being a mum, being a teacher, um, being a daughter, they are all such big roles that play in your life. And slowly one by one, they were starting to disappear. So you go, holy crap, if I'm not a daughter anymore, because I, yeah. you know, I, I did end up losing mum, yeah. if I'm not needed as a mother like I used to be for my own children, mm-hmm. then that's another loss, that's another role gone. And if I'm not going to be a teacher, you know, what the hell and who the hell am I? Plus we've moved 
Um, we moved districts. So we moved from the, being on the land and we'd always been on the land, my husband and I. And by the land, I mean, we were primary producers. So, you know, our, our, a lot of our, our family business came from being on the land and producing on there. So we moved as well. So I had so everything. much going on, everything going on at that one time. And I remember at one point when I knew I had to leave teaching, I got to, <laughs> it was the day before we were due back and I was curled up on the couch in a fetal position. I had a couple of emails that came through. It was during COVID, you know, it was that whole time where yep. there was, yep. you were teaching at school and then you were home, you know, working from home and teaching the kids. At mm-hmm. So there was all of this going on and I went, I can't do this anymore I can't I can't I can't I'm I'm about to fall apart and I started to and at that point I went right this is a decision that I've got to make for myself I can either um, continue going on and end up being very unwell and very unhappy and that's not what I wanted to do or I can make that this this break now and break away from teaching and really have that space to start to think about what I would like to do and who I'd like to become and uh, that's what I did what a decision and mm. it just makes me so sad, actually, to think of you being that upset, you know, about having to go somewhere, you know, mm. your career that you were like in a fetal position. I mean, that was, if that's not a sign, oh, I don't it, know what it, is. It scared the crap out of me. It scared the crap out of my husband. Yeah. And well, I was going, this, I've never, I've never felt like I felt then. It was, it was a, um, yeah, they often say uh, on the bathroom floor moment. It's yes. a, <laughs> that yes. was my almost being on the bathroom floor moment where I'm going, something's got to get. But I think sometimes, and 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 truly, I, I wasn't listening to the signs enough or taking stock enough. But I we suppose don't. in reflection, no, because you, you know, as as women, we keep on going through because of that's that's do. what that's what women do. You know, we're go, okay, we'll you know, yeah, we're and, and to be a lot strong. of the time you don't have that space either to be able to stop, but. I was probably in one one aspect, I suppose, Jen, a bit fortunate that I could pause and go, like, it's got to be time for me now. I've given so much to everybody else. It's It's got to be time for me and, and really think about it. Yes, it's your time now. Yeah, yeah. So how long did it take you? Like, did you literally go to school the next day and resign or did you think about it for a while or what did you do, Jo? I got up. I put my big girl pants on. I got I to the front. Saying. I say that all the time to myself. <laughs> right, Jen, time to get those big girl panties yeah. on. <laughs> I walked I walked through the door of the classroom and I started crying again and crying and crying. I thought, this is not good. Oh, my gosh. And, um, it, it happened that a colleague called in because I was often the first put of call. I was a, I was a senior experience yes. teacher. So often before I even got my my own day planned and ready and sorted, I would often have a, you know teachers coming to see me with with talking about their issues and what they need help with and and uh, that's how how I often would begin my day. You know a colleague came in and she saw I, I was in a state that you know often they arrived to me. <laughs> Mm-hmm. In. And uh, she went off to the principal and the principal came in and, uh, yeah, we had a lovely heart to heart and I took uh, some leave from that point onwards. Mm-hmm. And at that stage, my mum hadn't passed away either. She was she was in and out of hospital and really unwell. So that gave me the space to be able to take some time off and to spend her, you know, her last couple of months while, while she was still and with that's, us. That's a very beautiful place to be in. I, oh, yeah. I know this is, you know, slightly veering off, but you know that we do do the digression. But I'm actually always quite grateful to COVID in some ways because my mum passed in April of 2020 and I was working from home at that time and mm. I would not have seen her on that day had I been at work. And, you know, we got to spend the day together. We got to hang out. And just it gives you that space um, to be in the moment and be there for them as well, which is so precious because, you know, they're being there for us all the time and and it can be our turn to to do that, which is, it's really beautiful. Um, but, yes, I did digress. Um, but that, how long did you take off? Oh, that- Jen, I had, I had that much long service yes. leave, sick leave, because I'd always taught in rural and remote areas. So you, you couldn't get sick. Well, you could get, you did get sick, but there was no, never anyone to, to yeah, take your class. Yeah. So I had so much sick leave and I just exhausted all of that. And then from that Great. point on, just went on unpaid leave. Yeah. So I, I, I have not been 
step foot in the classroom, I think I've almost got PTSD. As much as I did love it at the time, I, I, there's no way that I would ever go back again. I've, I've done my time, 32 years in the yeah. classroom. You know, I had various roles in there, everything from being a, a principal through to, you know, advisors through to, to um, senior mentors, curriculum developing. I've done, you know, done a lot during that yeah. time. Uh, and, you know, I think profession. in this day and age, and something we were just chatting about earlier too, is, you know, often we are at a later stage in life where we change directions. Mm. Um, a lot of our younger, you know, our children themselves, you know, change direction as a younger person but you know like this is the thing our time is now you know we only have one life and you know we should spend it doing what we love which leads me to the next question what made you decide on what you're doing now what made you go right I'm going to be a transformation coach for midlife women I mean probably because of the age but yeah, what what made you do this? I love I love to hear about these transformations, you know, and to go from teaching little people to teaching big people how to live their best yeah. life. It's so cool. It is. I, I had a lot, and, and teaching is a is an older profession as well. A lot of the and it's very dominated by women. Yes. So of course, a lot of the a lot of the women that I used to work with were older. They weren't all that happy. Not and I'll speak generally. Not every yes. obviously not every person, but a lot weren't all that happy with what they were doing. So it was often me mentoring them at naturally <laughs> in in that <laughs> yeah within my role as a classroom teacher as well being an experienced senior teacher I would often come with you know, with a, a skill set as well for, for helping and, and for mentoring. And then I had, you know, my own metamorphosis of going, I, I've got to change, I want to change. And then my, I suppose the clearest message that I had or signal to have to, to do this, Jen, was my mum. She did not live a life that was true to herself and she knew that and I grew up seeing her with that and we, we were quite close mum and I because I I was a I was the baby of the family my sisters had long gone and so often it was just mum and I and having having chats and talks mm-hmm. and and I saw her she was a very capable woman who was never really given the opportunity to be who she wanted to be and she died with many many regrets oh. and I always knew and I know it makes me sad just thinking Very about sad. it and I knew I knew then that that's not the life that I wanted to lead either so I think when I had that that point of deciding, you know, that that you know that that you curled up on the yeah curled up on the couch moment. I knew then that if I didn't do something now, I was going to end up the same sort of pathway as my mum, and I didn't want she wouldn't she well she didn't want that for me, and I certainly didn't want that for myself, and I didn't want my children to see me being unhappy as well. Yeah, there's so many layers, isn't there? When you when you oh, look at it all, and then so from that, I just. Nice. I know that what I my story, seeing my own mother and her story, seeing what other women that I was I was dealing with, and, and friends as well. Jen, you you would have these sort of conversations, you know, with your own friends on yeah. what you know things aren't all that right. Well, what are we going to do about it? Um, I thought, Indeed. well, I've got yeah, I've got that passion. I, I love helping. That's that's been always something that I've you know I suppose being a being a teacher, you know, you want to you want to help, you want to you want to improve, you want to guide. Um, so I, I thought this is really what I would love to do is to help women because I've gone, I went through the process of what I know works and I'm a lifelong learner. So going through and doing my own courses and learning from others and reading and listening, and there's so many things that I knew I could offer as well. Yeah. I think, you know, we'll, we'll move on to, you know, I guess our usefulness, Uh, you know, in midlife, but, um, that's the thing with us, with our wisdom, not that I think I'm that wise, but our life experiences, you know, we do have so much to offer. And, I mean, as you know, like I'm, you know, an absolute advocate for us living our lives in full colour, you know, doing whatever we want. And we, what we have is life experience to help people along the way. Um, and, I mean, look, the whole thing is, and, you know, you've you've heard me chat about this in the past, but, you know, we as women can do whatever the heck we want. Doesn't matter how old we are. We're not dead yet. Um, you know, you're never too old and it's never too late to go forth and create something new. Um, I love hearing these stories and hearing your story in particular 
um, because it makes my heart sing to think that you're now out there helping midlife women, you know, live their best lives and also being healthy and happy. Um, and I'm just looking at your website now, you know, and it says, if not now, when? That's mm. a thing we don't want to be like your mother. And let's be honest, mine, that we get to the end of our life with regrets. Um, mm. It's you know, we. I'm back on your website. You know, just it just popped into me straight into me. You deserve to live a full life, and everyone that's connected to you deserves to get the best version of you. I love that. Like as I said, that just I popped back on your website, and that just called out. Tell me, how do you help women do that? Tell me about your courses and and yeah. your memberships and the things that you do. Um, we might even. I was going to say, I really want to talk about the menopause as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, there's so much to talk about at this yeah, stage. Good, we've had some good combos about that. But <laughs> this, at this moment, um, like finding out about this, I think is really important, you know, yeah. you know what you do, how you can help the ladies. Um, and if we have time, we're going to menopause. If we don't, that's a convo for another day. <laughs> Get your picture, it is. Get your back. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole series in itself. Oh, really, my it? yes. <laughs> um, I think, Jen, when by the time you get to the middle of life, for most, for the majority of women, and I would say the vast majority of women, life is busy. You have given your all for a number of decades to everybody else. So often by the time you get to your probably mid-40s, 50s, yep. you start to, it, your body lets you know that things aren't working like they used to. Yep, 45 you, you've got, for me. You've got, 45. You sometimes, yeah, you've got the little taps on the shoulders or the whispers in the ear, I often say, you know, it's a little whisper and then it becomes a, you know, a, a normal talking voice and then it becomes a yelling voice and and then it becomes, some, for some women, some women it becomes a screaming in their ears uh-huh. that they've got to start looking after themselves, yep. putting themselves first. And so I found that in, in some aspects and definitely, again, my mum was a great leader of that. She And she was of the era, and, I, and I'm guessing the women who are listening to this too, Jen, of, it was big pharma ruled, the doctor knows best. Yeah. So, you know, women would often go to the doctors with with uh, and often look <laughs> right down the track until they were at that point where they really probably should have gone maybe months or years beforehand. <laughs> they had a health issue and they were just given a tablet solve away you go and often those tablets would cause other issues so they were given more more pharmaceuticals and for some women of that generation it caused all sorts of ongoing side effects and ill health mm. and I think what happens some people like quick fixes as well even in today's society like a quick fix a pill to to solve a problem rather than working on yourself and really what i I'm, I'm focusing on i've got a better than before membership and that's focusing on the health and wellness for women of this age because we need yeah. to look at, at at various various um what i call my pillars it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle if you think uh-huh. of, of all the pieces so we're looking at our movement our nutrition sleep and rest stress management purpose and connection and just looking at the hormone levels and how we support our hormones within our body um, mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean things like HRT and, and, our, and our sex no. hormones. I'm talking about the endocrine disruptors, what we've got in our homes, what we're what we're ingesting, the foods that we're eating, all that sort of thing that and can our disrupt our hormones. Yeah, our so hormones we've got at this stage go berserk. Like you know, we yeah. were what just the other week we were both at an ICM meeting and both of us were like emotional and it's like the hormones aren't having a good day. And it's true, you know, like, and, and I mean, fortunately, we can recognize this, but mm. it's a real thing. Like some days we're great. Some days we're crying because, you know, I dropped my pen on the floor. Like, let's go figure yeah. that out. It's the emotional know. roller coaster. It's real. And the it's one of those things where I think we've got to look at if we're like for both you and I are 55 now. Yes. And I want to live till I'm 95. If oh, I'm my willing. gosh, yes. Yeah, but I don't just want to live to 95. I want to live well. So there's a lifespan and a health span. And we've got to start looking at ourselves after ourselves now, Jen, because right now, 80% of women who are at the age of 50 have got two or more chronic diseases. That mm-hmm. means they're going, they're, they've got all of these other symptoms that are going to be happening for them. Yep. And 80% of those diseases can be prevented with really simple things. And so what I do in the membership is, uh, and again, I'm using my teaching background. No, everyone's coming in. Everyone comes in with their own health story as well as their own life story. 
some people might be great at movement and nutrition, but crappy sleep and really stressed. So people work out their own recipe and I help guide them on how they can create their own recipe that suits them, their life and their needs. And it's lovely we get health and wellness experts that come in and talk to the women once a month on, on various aspects. So again, some months it might appeal to some women and they'll take something from that and others it might, you know, that might be an area that they're really well supported in. And then we've got coaching sessions once a month within that as well, plus all the you know resources and things that go along with it. So that's that's one one aspect that I've I've got mm-hmm. in my, my business. And then the other one is is mentoring. And that's another thing that's very close to my heart where I help women you know, who come at a bit of a crossroads and where they want to, what they want to do, where they want to be, and uh, just help them with that planning and, and sorting through um, what they might want to do in the second half of life. It's so, I love this so much because, you know, the thing is we get to this age and I am going to move on to the menopause because we're getting to this age and, you know, I don't feel like this. I don't think you feel like this. But, you know, for some women, when they hit menopause, it's like, right, my job is done. My usefulness has passed. Um, you know, the, the the reason I was put on this earth, you know, to bear children, that job has finished. And then they just kind of shut down and go, right, I'm, I'm just going to exist until I die. Um, whereas, you know, I personally have embraced menopause um, look, there are things that I do not like. Um, you know, I do not like the fact that I've lost hair where I'd like to keep it and I've gained it where I do not wish to have it. Um, but you know, I work with that. I have I have a magnifying mirror mirror and tweezers <laughs> and I have lash extensions. <laughs> so, you know, you work around these things. Um, but I don't for me, my life is just beginning. Um, you know, we don't <laughs> we don't have to, well, I don't have to worry about the monthly, you know, cycle anymore. I'm just, you know, don't have to think about such things. And, you know, I, I think I've been lucky in the fact that, you know, I I definitely get the good old power surges. But, and the, you know, I get emotional waves every now and then, but I've been very lucky. And I think, though, that the myth that we're past our, our usefulness, that's something that really needs to be addressed because we're not, are we? Like, oh, God no, not even close to it. We've got we've got the like I said, second half of life to live. Exactly. And we've we've we're going to be living that with a lot more wisdom. God, like, I wish I had what I the knowledge I've got now when I was bloody twenty or thirty years old. But then you me, I wouldn't be where I am now either if I didn't. <laughs> you have to learn the hard ways when you're younger. But you know, it's, it, culturally, our our society doesn't embrace this older women, no, it, or, or, or getting older in general. Whereas lots of other cultures do, they respect the wisdom of the older older generation. And it's quite interesting. And such a bloody age of society we live in. You've it's just got to look just... at yeah, all the marketing. It's marketed at, at you know, a, a, such a younger demographic, even for looking at any wrinkle cream. It's yeah. a bloody 30-year-old who's putting it I on know, their right? face. And you go, oh, for God's sake. Yeah, or then look- if it's a mature woman, they're already airbrushed out anyway. I want to see my lines. Yeah, there's, I want to see a whole- real women. Yes. Like yes. we want to see real women of our age. All shapes, how all it's, sizes. How it's helping, you know, like if it's an anti-aging cream. And I mean, look, I'm I'm all about do you. You know, if you want to be um, have yes. silver hair, fabulous. Silver hair would not suit me. I'm gonna have pink hair till the day I go. Um, but you know, I'm all about, you know, you do you and what suits you. And yeah, but but please make it real, you know. Advertising don't market it to me. Agencies out there. Make it real. We 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 are the women that have more disposable income than the younger generation. Yet we are the ones that are often ignored uh, because we should. Now, should is actually a word that's banished from my vocabulary. But people have this idea that we should be doing this. And you know, you will have heard me talk about my slippers. Should be wearing slippers. You know, no slippers are out to kill you. I fell up the stairs. Um, you know, we need to be out. Yeah, I fell up the stairs and I had to go to the osteo and I've got bruised bones and all sorts. I'm like, oh. really? Those slippers, I'm not wearing them anymore. They were very nice. They were pink flamingo slippers. But yeah, mm. anyway, I, di- I digress. But, you know, <laughs> there's so much, so much opportunity and so much fun to be had. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you're, you know, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 
you know, there's still fun. We're going on a cruise in January with really close friends of ours. Clem will be 92. Oh, I love it. Yeah, 92. Die will be 76. Um, and we adore them. Um, they were at the launch party, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, they're living their best life. Mm. So I think you, you need examples like that too, Jen. Like that one of my favorite things to say is you can't be what you can't see. We yes. need to see women who are doing different things at this age of life and changing direction like we have. That yes. it's okay. You can change. There are no rules. There are no rules. No, and it is you, some people will celebrate that. And that's what's that's what you know the work that I do too. A lot of the women find it confronting because they want to change, but sometimes it's it's taking that big brave step or a couple of little steps. And some people won't celebrate that who are that are close to them because they change within they 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 are no longer the person that they used to be and and some of their, their close connections find that really hard. They find their and voice, Joe. They find their they voice. Do, and and they find their voice, they find a different role and a different purpose. And that can be not only uncomfortable as you're going through the changes, because we were talked about that, you know, prior to our conversation yes. of hitting the cord, but it's also those around you who who may not accept you as much either. Or it takes some time. And for some yeah. women, that's enough just to hold them back. So it's it's yeah. helping them to see that you, you can get past it and exactly. it's going to introduce you to a new group of people who will embrace you in all of who you're becoming. And let's just go to societal expectations as well. Like, as I said, you know, this is what society expects us to do. This is not reality. You know, we don't want to do this. You know, we're on a mission. <laughs> Yeah, I just find it so so exciting to see for ourselves, like watching you change and evolve, watching my own myself changing and yeah. evolving. The women that we work with and we we um you know we're around watching them change and evolve, and knowing it's not it's continual. We haven't stopped. I'm, no. I'm I'm just starting. I can't wait to see where if I'm. This is what I've done in the last couple of years. God help me! I don't, I don't know where I'm going to be by the time I'm sixty, and I can't bloody wait. Uh, yeah, how good how good is that I, that is I just it's yeah. so good it is so good and you know I guess we're brave aren't we you know we're brave we're, we're bucking the trend we're moving out of you know um a certain road or you know we've diverted off onto a certain path and the past is just limitless like unlim- yeah. unlimited or unlimitless whatever you know like we're just we can do anything we can, we can do anything. Yes, and I love to be able to dream. Yes, stir that dream pot. There's so much that we can <laughs> we can do and be. Yeah, and and like I've just spent the last week or so writing down all the things that I would love to be able to do, and I'm I'm going to bloody will do it. I mean, well, if you ask me, some, <laughs> share some, Joe. I'd love to hear some of them. Yeah, well, I I would love to be able to like we, we, we again we were talking about this. Um, before we hit record is that do uh, working more um within us within the using my voice and speaking at the moment I've got a podcast and I'm it's been going for nearly a year now and that's I'm I'm nearly hit the 50 episode mark and that's really exciting and that's growing and that's building and just being able to talk to incredible women I I want to continue to do that and to do it on probably a, a bigger stage as well and and work with um with more women yeah. on who they can become and what they can do and how they can be empowered so they feel good within themselves, they can feel as though they can take those next steps going in the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, however it might, long it might be for them. Um, yeah, just, I, I can just see it getting bigger and bigger and being able to help more and more people. And that's exciting. That's really exciting. How exciting is our, is our, our lives? Like we yes. are blessed. We are so blessed. Well, I'm just looking at the time. It's like I think we get. I think we'll go to menopause another time. But I what I do want you to talk about is you have a masterclass coming up. Um, I do. I have a masterclass. Please, yeah, please tell us about that. Yep. On the 12th of July, it's a free masterclass that I have. Uh, women can join either in the morning or the evening, at 11 or 7 p.m. at night. 
Uh, it's called How to Go from Surviving to Thriving During the Menopause Transition and Beyond. Uh, a lot of women get to this stage of life, Jen, or even a bit beforehand, and they're, a bit up, they're, they're quite unsure about what to expect. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to give them the information, the 101 on what's happening and why it's happening to your body. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit like when you hit through puberty and pregnancy, you want to know everything about it. Yeah. But a lot of women don't know about this stage of life, and this is one of the really important stages that we need to go go through and understand uh, what they can do to support themselves and really look at our health and wellness at this stage of life and what you can yeah. do um, going forward because we want to feel as well as we can for as long as we can. So that's coming up on the twelfth of July. So you can register at my website, and um, Joe I will Clark include Clark those. Things. Yep, in the yep. all the yes. show links, um, you'll be able to that. find where Joe lives and plays, and just go actually about the masterclass. You know, you talk about puberty and you talk about pregnancy. You know, there's so much information about those things, mm. but you know, where is the you know midlife one hundred and one? Where oh, is the, Jen, the menopause one hundred and one? Research, some of the research only came out in 2021. This is research on women's brains and how it helped, you know, what goes on during a transition. That's brand new research, but it hasn't been out there before. This is new. This is new stuff for, for, for us all to be able to absorb and learn. And the more we know, the more empowered we become. Uh, we, you don't be, you're not afraid. And it's not seen, like one of the big stories I want to have just before we close up, Jen, is that it's not all doom and gloom. I no, think it's we not get, doom and gloom. We get scared. There's a big marketing push at the moment that, um, you know, anything related to perimenopause and menopause is, is doom and gloom and it's going to be awful. But there's there's so many other things. Just just know, get the information, know what's going to happen. And um, there are ways and means that you can care for your, your body and support yourself during this transition if it's going to be a tricky one for you. Yeah, and I'd just like to say, well, let's have a look at the both of us. You're perimenopausal. I yeah. am menopausal. Yep. And, you know, our life, I feel my life is so much better now than it ever has been. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I feel like leading into these, it also, it, it, it's like it kind of takes away, you know, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it's, I'm going to swear people, it's like no fucks given. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, right. It's it like it takes away the barriers. You just go, right, I'm just going to do the things that I want to do and I'm going to be who I want to be. And, you know, I don't really care about, you know, you do care about what others think, but you know what I mean? Like it's like I want to be me. I want to live new, my life. Yeah, it's a new freedom, it's isn't it? Very liberating and very, <laughs> you know, you do, you feel so much freedom. Um, thank you, Joe, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you as always. Um, I will get Joe back uh, to talk more about the perimenopause and menopause because we have funny stories about that that we've chatted about ourselves. Um, so I'd be like delighted if you would come back. Um, but that's a wrap for today. And until we meet again in the next episode, my loves, don't forget to live your life like it is a pinktastic carnival of awesomeness, all the awesomeness, because it can be. Seriously. Embrace every hue from baby pink to hot magenta. Life is too short for just one shade. I will catch you next time. Hey, ladies, I created this podcast because I know we need more of it to help us bring back our pink and live our best lives. But guess what? We can't do this alone. So if you loved this episode, let's spread the world. Share it on your socials. Send it to a friend. And don't forget to write us a review. By doing this, you become part of the movement to bring back your pink and inspire others to do the same. I'm incredibly grateful to have you in my world as we live life in full colour and become our authentic selves. Together, we're unstoppable. Let's keep rocking and bringing back the pink. <laughs>